Um, I I'm gonna do a series of uh, videos on uh, on the uh, on dialectical materialism, which is a philosophical basis of Marxism, and um, I thought that I would actually start with some opinions and a bit of chat because. Um, it's not, I'm not a teacher, I'm not trained as a lecturer either. And um, so actually to get towards the format that I actually want to use to teach may take some time and may take a few chats and a few mistakes. And if I make mistakes, um, uh, don't worry about pointing them out. I may not agree with you, but um, by all means, point out the mistakes that I am actually making on this series of talks. So, uh, where shall we start? I mean, uh, I think I should give a bit of background. Um, I joined the Young Socialists in 1971. My background before that was um, studying physics and mathematics. And uh, immediately I was impressed by the scientific value of Marxism. I mean, some of the first things I read was uh, Trotsky's Revolution Betrayed, which... Uh, um, had a very good analysis of the Soviet Union and where it was going, uh, written in 1936. And some of the first pamphlets by Marx, which I read, I was very impressed with the um, uh, the scientific content of the analysis of capitalism and, uh, and uh, surplus value and, and all the concepts that were derived from that. Um, so... Uh, over the years, I've uh, um, studied Marx, Engels, Lenin and Trotsky, but also haven't uh, needed to go back to study Hegel and see, uh, you know, uh, his real compendium of dialectics, albeit from an uh, idealist viewpoint. I mean, Hegel weren't the first person to come out with a, a dialectical philosophy, but he was by far the most systematic and uh, in fact no one has written such a systematic uh, study of dialectics ever since. Anyway, I mean you can go back to Heraclitus in uh, ancient Greece but if you, there's very little actually left of Heraclitus, there's only fragments and uh, most of his works were destroyed at a fire in Alexandria in Egypt way back, um, don't remember when. Um, Anyhow, so uh, so I've had to study uh, Hegel as well. I've also read Kant, and uh, I did a little study of the uh, British empiricists because uh, it's one of those things that you always combat and um, the uh, outlook of the ruling class within your own country. So in in Britain, it tends to be towards empiricism, and in, in the US, it tends to be pragmatism or related to pragmatism in some way or other and of course uh, there's all the other uh, various outlooks which are related to religion and idealism in one uh, form or another anyhow um so this uh, um conversation today is just an experimental one in order to uh for me to clarify my own mind um, what dialectical materialism is all about and also um, to introduce people because many people don't haven't come across it in recent years I mean it was uh, taught much more um, you know go back a few decades but in in recent years uh, so many people have abandoned it but in fact what they've abandoned is the most advanced philosophy that humanity's ever produced and gone back to earlier philosophies and uh, earlier forms of thought. And um, one of the things that dialectics does explain very well is movement and change. And uh, it really is the logic of revolution. So when Hegel came to write his Science of Logic and, uh, well, all his works actually, Phenomenology of Spirit and uh, Lectures on the History of Philosophy, he was actually... Um, propelled forward, if you like, by the French Revolution and what had happened during the French Revolution. It was a, a period of upheaval, you know, there was the uh, um, philosophical enlightenment in the 18th century and you had the American Revolution, War of Independence, and then you had the French Revolution. So it was a, a period of turmoil in, uh, in a, a world which was much smaller in population than ours is today. But anyhow... 
so it was you know actual revolutionary movements in the world itself that that actually pushed forward thought but of course hegel didn't come out of nowhere his actual philosophy was a development of german philosophy that that um primarily in many ways started from kant and then moved on to fichte and then to uh, schelling and schelling really uh when faced with the contradictions that Hegel brought out, he, he decided that he would uh, move towards art. Um, so, but Hegel, Hegel stuck with logic, and uh, he, he expressed the contradictions in a in a logical way. And um, so, the, um, both Marx and Engels studied Hegel when they were young, and uh, Marx also studied. Um, uh, materialist philosophers like Democritus and Epicurus, and, uh, uh, and he wrote his uh, doctoral dissertation on those. But above all, both Marx and Engels studied Feuerbach, who'd uh, previously studied Hegel, but um, uh, he he uh, came uh, out with a materialist philosophy. He didn't really incorporate much of Hegel into his philosophy, and uh, his philosophy was somewhat vague in um, the, the thing um, really to read in in relation to uh, Feuerbach is Marx's thesis on Feuerbach um, where he was actually uh, criticizing and breaking from Feuerbach um, but at one time both Marx and Engels were very much under the influence of Feuerbach of course um, so when they um, Although they wrote criticisms of uh, Feuerbach and also they um, uh, had a long polemic against the young Hegelians, but the people who were who continued um, Hegel's philosophy, but um, who were not critical of the Hegelian philosophy uh, like Marx and Engels were, and hadn't been influenced by Feuerbach and uh, didn't actually. Uh, study uh, Hegel from a materialist standpoint which uh, which is what Marx and Engels came to do so they their dialectical materialism was the opposite of Hegel that it was a materialist dialectics as opposed to an idealist of dialectics anyhow so um and then of course um when when Lenin studied uh, Marx and Engels works he also decided that he would need because uh, need to go back to Hegel to make a thorough, thorough study of Hegel's works because um, neither Marx nor Engels wrote a comprehensive uh, um, critique of Hegel in, in detail or, or a very long philosophical works on Hegel because for Marx when he uh, the last of his um, thesis on Feuerbach was that the uh, philosophers had interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, was to change it, and uh, and actually for Marx, it was um, necessary to to actually study political economy in order to change the world, and that is what he did. He threw himself into a study of uh, political economy, which uh, resulted in uh, capital, and uh, of course also he was involved in the. Uh, revolution sweep in Europe in 1848. So he was moved um, not out of the field of theory, uh, but to a more practical form of theory in terms of uh, in terms of political economy and uh, politics itself. Um, so when he said the philosophers have only interpreted the world, the point, however, is to change it. He didn't mean he would just go out with a few bricks or whatever he he meant he was going to write he was going to analyze capitalism practically and study uh, the, its uh, empirical laws and Im empirical works um so um wh wh i was also talking about lenin so um he decided that he would need to do a, a more thorough study of hegel because uh uh, Marx and Engels had never written this down. Um, just the you know the, the, their early works. Uh, so uh, Lenin made a thorough study of Hegel and other philosophers prior to Hegel, people like Aristotle and other philosophers, and Feuerbach, and 
He had he the the notebooks that he wrote, which were volume thirty eight of his collected works, were never actually published in his lifetime, and I don't think he really wanted them to be published. But they're uh, they actually the documents that are in there really represent the highest development of philosophy, you know, that humanity has produced, as far as I'm concerned. This is my opinion, that um, I've read uh, Soviet philosophers who followed uh, Lenin after Lenin died, and including uh, Ivald Ilyenkov, who I think was uh, pretty much the best of the Soviet philosophers, but none of them really came close to Lenin in his understanding of dialectics and dialectical materialism. And uh, that's why volume 38, although it's only notes and uh, notes on on Hegel, uh, most of them, well, not all of them, but um, that's why it's such an important document even today. And, uh, you know, it's well worth revering and going back on. And, uh, of course, that is one of the things I will revere and go back on in this series on dialectics. Um, I don't know how long I've talked for, but I'm going to bring this to a close now and see what I've done. Right. <laughs>